discretion is advised. Mama Black. This program contains language and sequences some viewers may find disturbing. Right! A big story tonight, a fugitive couple in jail charged with murdering a Gwinnett County man. Police say there's much more to this Bonnie and Clyde style crime spree with the pair possibly linked to another homicide in Alabama. Our Chris Hopper joins us now with new information about the suspects. Gwinnett police say the man is in jail in Gwinnett. The woman's occupying a cell in Alabama. They were wanted there. Now they're facing a murder charge here and more charges may be on the way for this pair. For weeks, 39 year old Michael Harvey's death remained a mystery. A man with a gunshot wound left for dead in the middle of a Gwinnett County road the night of November 10th. Tonight, 11 Alive News has learned the suspects have been in jail since the day after Harvey was killed. 30-year-old Demetrius Heed and 35-year-old Talisha Tate, originally wanted in Alabama, now charged with Harvey's murder after an extensive investigation. And tonight, Gwinnett police tell us they may be connected to another homicide in Mobile. The lead detective tracked the two down in Norcross and booked them on those outstanding warrants. Tate was evading a probation violation. Court records show she and her newborn child tested positive for cocaine when she gave birth last year. Heed was running from robbery and domestic violence charges. Both have extensive criminal histories, drugs, theft, even prostitution. Tonight, Gwinnett County police are sure Tate and Heed shot Harvey after their vehicle sideswiped his that November night on Button Gwinnett Drive. Why? They're still looking for that answer, but now they're both in jail facing serious charges. And more could be coming for this couple that's had its fair share of run-ins. He thought he was going to die. A FedEx driver held up today at gunpoint says he's calling it quits. CBS 2's Roseanne Tay is live in Chatham with more on this story. Roseanne. Well, Rob, there have been several incidents in recent weeks. Delivery drivers and other workers robbed at gunpoint on the job. Still, the driver held up today said he never thought it would happen to him. As I was getting in. This FedEx driver says he had just delivered a package at 80th and Langley when a young man appeared at his delivery truck. He came over and he pointed the gun right at me and then told me to get in. And I went to the back and that's when he hopped in. He got in the passenger side seat. He says the gunman who looked young and nervous told him to drive into the alley. And like I said, I was very hesitant about turning into the alley. Why? And, uh, because I knew he was going to shoot me once we got into the alley. After giving up his debit card and cell phone, he was asked to start opening up the packages in the back of the truck. And I kind of had my hand on the handle and uh, it just took off. Open. You went out the back door? Out the back door. He says he ran for his life. To help find the gunman, community activists canvassed the neighborhood this evening, handing out flyers looking for information that might help. We're working with this community to highlight it, not only in this community, but across the city because this is nothing new. It's just that it's the Christmas season and it, it's been increased. A FedEx driver for six years now, Charles says he never worried about being held up, but after today, he has had enough. He had his hand on the trigger. It seemed like he was just going to shoot me at any, at any moment. Now reached this afternoon, FedEx told us employee safety is a priority. In a statement, they said we are grateful that the employee involved in the incident was unharmed and we are cooperating with the police. But Charles says after this terrifying experience today, he just doesn't think he can return to the job. Clock. Get a look at these photos. A man accused of stealing packages off doorsteps caught in cell phone pictures taken by a quick thinking neighbor. Now this happened in Collingwood Drive in South Charlotte. Now police are looking for this man who neighbor tells us tried to attack her. WBTV's Alex Giles live with details. And Alex, I understand this man could be facing uh, more than just larceny charges. Uh, yes, Paul, this neighbor that I talked to tells me that when she spotted the man taking off with the packages, she hopped in her car and followed him. She says when she started taking pictures of him, that's when it got violent. She asked that for her own safety, we not show her face. Collingwood Drive had an unwelcome visitor just one day before Thanksgiving. A neighbor says this man was spotted slowly moving through the area. A couple minutes later, my dog alerted me. So I looked out and it's the same guy cutting through my yard. 
But now his hands were full. He was carrying some packages he didn't have just minutes ago. Police have not officially confirmed he is the suspect, so we are blurring his face. As I'm seeing it, I'm pissed because he's obviously like trespassing through my yard. You know, I'm home alone. But this watchful neighbor wasn't going to let him get away. She followed him down the road and began taking photos on her phone. In the moment, you can only remember so much. Um, so I wanted like a clear description of what he looked like. But that description came with consequences. The man attacked her when she started snapping pics. He proceeded to hit me repeatedly with the bag and the other things that he was holding through the window of my car. She backed off and the man got away with what they believed to be her next door neighbor's new expensive jacket. I mean, I was really happy that she chased him down and got pictures of him because that really helped the police. It was a nice jacket, so I hope somebody has it that needs to be warm. But they agree stealing is not the answer. Obviously, maybe down on his luck, but doesn't justify taking stuff from somebody you know that they've earned and paid for with their own money. That neighbor who says she was attacked says she does plan on pressing charges if this man is caught. She encourages others to let their neighbors know if they plan on being away from their homes when a package is going right to be now, delivered. Family and friends are reeling. They're heartbroken after a young girl was murdered. And police say the person responsible was her ex-boyfriend. John Shirick is in Covington with the story. One young woman said she's sure she's going to wake up and this will all have been a nightmare. Disbelief and shock and tears for Alyssa Wright. Alyssa's mother, Melinda Wright, receiving the embrace of a community grieving with her. No one able to explain any of it. Alyssa Wright, 19 years old, strangled Tuesday, according to investigators, by her 19-year-old boyfriend, Elijah Ramatar, at the home of his parents. But what happened between them? That's still what I'm waiting on. I have no answers. Alyssa's Facebook, filled with photos of her and her boyfriend, Ramatsar. Her mother says they started seeing each other in January. She said he doted on Alyssa. No sign of any trouble. Alyssa graduated from Alcove High School this past May. She was preparing to go to school to become a nurse. Alyssa's Aunt Tina. She had so much to live for. And this was such a senseless crime. Alyssa's Aunt Phyllis. Life, she was such a joy to be around. She's always smiling, always laughing. The family grateful for the support of so many who loved Alyssa, contributing money for funeral expenses here and on a GoFundMe page. It tells me what I already knew, how wonderful my baby girl was. Just to remember her, how she was, that beautiful smile. She says she is praying for Elijah Ramatsar and his family. Investigators have not released any details about Ramatsar, whether he's cooperating, whether he's made any statements, something that might give Alyssa's family some answers about how this happened and why. Building a bank isn't always what it's cracked up to be. That's what one criminal is learning after attempting to rob five banks in Manhattan in one day and turning up empty-handed. According to police, Alex Garcia tried to rob five different banks, working his way from Midtown to the ritzy stretch of the Upper East Side. Garcia allegedly walked into banks with a sign reading, Give me money, $5,000. After each teller refused, Police say Garcia would walk out and move on to the next bank. One teller even took his sign. According to the New York Post, 38-year-old Garcia has 56 prior arrests for drugs, petty larceny, and trespassing. Authorities believe Garcia's tenacity in the wake of failure came from successfully robbing a bank for $1,000 the week prior. Authorities are still on the hunt for the less than successful robber.